Good morning. Welcome to Murrow's Inlet in South Carolina. It's a balmy day, 19 degrees, but I welcome you to our worship, the Liturgy of the Word, for this the seventh Sunday after Epiphany. And uh, particularly extend welcome to our parishioners at St. Hilda St. Luke's in St. Thomas, Ontario, and Trinity Elmer in Ontario. God bless us as we spend this time together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts. upon us. Christ, have, Christ mercy have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Let us pray. We'll call it for the seventh Sunday after the Epiphany. Almighty God, your Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving love. Renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness, sustain us by your mighty power through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. A reading from Luke. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If anyone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other one also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those with whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid back in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you, a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. The Word of the Lord. Thank you, Paul, for reading this wonderful gospel passage. This is called the Sermon on the Plains in Luke's Gospel, similar to the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew's Gospel. And there are three points that I want to draw our attention to today that uh, I think are significant. And the first one is, but I say to you who are willing to hear. Listening is a skill that many of us probably don't use wisely. When we're in conversation or in dialogue with people, our thoughts wander and we try to find a response and often we misunderstand what somebody has said because we haven't been listening. So Jesus is inviting the people who gathered around him, his disciples and others, not to think about anything else but to hear what he has to say. And Jesus is very much aware of the circumstances under which he lives. He lives, like his fellow Jews, under the regime of the Roman Empire. 
for taxation and oppression and brutality exist. And Jesus is not inviting in any way in this gospel passage for people to tolerate abuse, to tolerate any ways of injustice, but to speak uh, clearly. And when Jesus says, turn, if someone slaps you on the cheek, turn the other cheek, it's an interesting passage because Jesus is not talking about abuse. He's actually talking to standing up to somebody because in the ancient Mediterranean world, a slap by the right hand on the right cheek was an indication of somebody upset with you or a, a slave owner or a ruler who wanted to insult you. When Jesus says, turn the other cheek, what he basically means is the left hand will only slap the other cheek and if you turn the other cheek no one will dig indignify themselves by using their life ha left hand uh, to slap somebody so Jesus we need to be careful in in this day and age that Jesus does not tolerate any type of abuse the second piece that I want to draw our attention to today is another piece of teaching by Jesus. Treat people in the same way that you would want them to treat you. Now, when we think about this passage, how do we want to be treated? We want to be treated with dignity and respect, with love and care and kindness and generosity. And when we look out of ourselves to others, others want the same thing, even if in some way they try to deny that. Inherent with each and every one of us is that longing to belong, longing to be part of, longing to share in, <clears throat> in, 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 a, in a life that's full of meaning, rich with relationships and overfilling with love and to treat someone else the way we'd want to be treated often requires some attention to our actions before we make responses that might indignify ourselves and indignify others. The final point is something that you hear me speak of frequently and often is be compassionate just as your father is compassion, compassionate. Compassion requires us to listen and often to say nothing. It requires us to be present when someone is going through grief, crises, illness, and to let them know that by our presence, we are in some way solidarity with them, to support them, to care for them, to love them. and and. The essence of compassion is a full demonstration of, of how God lives in us. The compassionate one, the one who is filled with empathy and caring. And we who follow the way Jesus are called to emulate this compassion by the way in which we relate to one another, particularly those going through times of crisis and trouble. And this brings us to the second point, back to the second point for a moment. Treat people as in the same way that you want them to treat you. Think about and ponder these words of Jesus to us this day. And may God's Spirit touch our inner soul with that understanding of our discipleship in following Jesus. Amen. Almighty God, we pray for the church that we will be united in your purpose, faithful witnesses to the gospel, open and welcoming to all who seek you, and a strong voice for truth, justice, and reconciliation in the world. We give thanks for our freedom to worship 
and the blessing of gathering today. We pray for churches in places where that freedom is denied and the faithful are persecuted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all who serve you and your church, our bishops, priests, deacons, and lay leaders. Extend your grace over them and grant them the gifts of your Holy Spirit as they shepherd us. We pray for Bishop Barry and Archdeacon Janet and for Father Pat and Jeanette. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of justice, we pray for the leaders of nations that enlightened by your wisdom, they will seek to, to serve their people, choosing justice over power, and that their decisions will promote and protect and safeguard human rights so that all may live in safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for peace. Our world is fractured by conflict and hate, torn by divisiveness and prejudice. Help us to see beyond our differences, to not use words as weapons, to see you in our brothers and sisters, to learn to love our neighbors as you have commanded, so that we may move towards peace in our homes, community, workplaces, and schools. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of Ukraine today and all places where peace and stability are fragile. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, we pray for all in need, for food for the hungry, shelter for the homeless, acceptance and welcome for the marginalized and isolated. Lead us to see where we may be your hands, Lord, and lift up those who are struggling, that they may rightfully share in your abundance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray, especially today on Family Day weekend, for all families, that children will be protected and loved, that parents will be supported as they teach and guide their children, that all who make a family may live in love, peace, and respect with one another and their community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for those suffering any illness. Comfort them with your loving presence and grant them hope and courage as they journey toward health. We pray for those on our prayer list. For Nora Littler, Caroline Thyssen, Larry, brother-in-law of Terry and Evelyn Julian, and those known to each of us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, that they will rest with you in eternal peace, light, and joy. And for those ending their earthly journey, that you will be with them. We pray for Sally Spackman, sister of Sue Green, and the Green family in their loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we offer our prayers knowing you hear us and answer us may be best for us. Send your Holy Spirit to guide us as we seek to do your will and be a blessing to each other and our community. This we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Nancy, for leading us in our prayers of the people today. We gather all these prayers together in those words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Bring us all together in this wonderful doxology. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank Thanks. you for joining us in this time of worship and may your day and week ahead be filled with the awareness of God's presence in your life.